You can develop a classroom set of guidelines for behavior and for communication, engaging all kids in developing it. And it can be a living document, a living, you know, on the wall, and it can be changed at any point if you need to add or subtract or tweak. So here are just some samples of the things you might come up with that everyone will have a chance to speak of this and respectfully, etc. So whatever the guidelines are that are going to create that cooperative environment, restorative environment. Um, number six, a cooperative process will encourage all participants to tell their story. You go to the basics, concrete and specific. Not, oh, I don't think she likes me. <clears throat> Why is it you don't think she likes me? What specifically? What did you see? What did you hear? What did you feel? How has that affected you? Everyone has a story about these problems. If you go into the concreteness of it, that is how you find your way through to the other side. Um, number seven, you want to go to the basement of it. You want to go underneath, to under, un, you know, to the underlying issues, such as Jeremy. Jeremy had a need. He was meeting his need. So what are the needs, the values, the interests, the concerns, the fears? What is motivating that behavior, causing it? Number eight, <clears throat> after the dialogue is finished, participants work together towards a written agreement that resolves a problem and restores the relationships, building on the resources, capabilities, and assets of each person. Yeah. You have to use your judgment about that. Um, there would be a time and a place when I think it could be useful. And even if they can't read it entirely, this is what we agreed upon about that. But the best is if you can put it in language you know, that they can get. So keep it as simple as possible. And even if it's your record of their agreement and you can help, you know, read it to them whenever it's needed to remind them what they what they agree to. And the agreement really is a way of trying to create a culture. You're trying to say this is the way we are together. I mean you use it the whole year. This is the kind of relationships we want to have in this classroom. This is how we want to function together. And if it doesn't and if we're not doing it, everybody's responsible for speaking up and saying, you know, let's shift gears here and do it the way we said we were going to do it. <laughs> so, okay, number nine. So not every student is ready to cooperate. So what do you do? You have a need for structure and guidance um, so that decisions can be made for students until they decide voluntarily to participate. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> so you keep inviting students. You don't shame them, blame them, judge them coerce them, that they are invited until such time as they are willing. And in the meantime, you have consequences that are respectful, restorative, reasonable, relevant. And then 10, you follow up on whatever is formed so that you build the trust and the commitment. So, that's an overview of what a restorative environment could look like, could feel like. So I have some specific ideas beyond this to, to share with you, but what are your questions and <clears throat> comments at this point? What do you think? Yeah. Um, the, I guess for, I see this as, certain kids, I think my when I was in high school, who just, I mean, there were several of them that just <coughs> didn't want to have anything to do with trying to solve the problem. I think we're talking about over and over. So do you just keep going on with consequences until, I guess I see this as being really useful in elementary, and it could be secondary, if, yeah. if the student's willing. But there's only so much you can do once the student is old enough where they're making made their mind and they're well, it depends on your school. Yeah. <clears throat> it depends on what their discipline policy is and their protocol. <clears throat> if 
you have good solid support from, uh, I mean, handling it in the classroom is the first practice, or pulling a pull out, you know, but handling it yourself is by far the best way to proceed. But you should have some backup. I mean, some students are hard to reach. They've been doing it for a long time, and they're getting a lot of attention for their negative behavior. And so you need to have some backup also for, for when things don't work. But you have to customize it to your context. It's just, it was, especially with like the secondary, I feel like it's not true. Just, yeah, like, they're talking about it. Right. right. So elementary, there's just so much more downtime than possible students. In secondary, you have 55 minutes and you have 30 kids. And I, I mean, I've never felt like I had time to do like, your issue right now because there are 20 right. other kids waiting for me to continue with what. Unless they disrupt so much. Well, then they got to Right, and then they got some of the projects. I felt like if you were going to have like, students throughout the day, it's kind of I know. <laughs> so I just, I guess, how would that help? Well, I think that there are a number of options. I mean, one is the pull-out idea, that you take the student, you sit down with the student, try to have a conversation with yourself. If there's a conflict between several students, I mean, you can, you can try to have a a little mini mediation and try to help them to work it out and talk about it outside of the classroom. If it engages the whole classroom, I think you shut down what you're doing and you just say, we need to do this. You know, and students can talk about how it affects them and so on, if they're willing to. It depends again, you know, on the kind of climate that you've been able to create in the classroom. Um, to do hard thing to <laughs> student teaching is not optimal yeah. place to, you, you aren't creating the environment, you are walking into something that's already created, <coughs> and they know you're a student teacher, and sometimes they're pretty um, challenging to you, because they do that to some, so they do that, I mean it's somehow in their job description somewhere, <laughs> I don't know, but this is a chance to really, you know, have some fun, I guess. So it's not a, you know, as fair a, a situation in which to try to do these things. But there are peer mediation programs that utilize secondary students to resolve their own problems that are very successful. So these kids are capable of it. And actually, a lot of the kids who do the peer mediation stuff have high honors in the school. They are well respected. So it's not that it's totally alien from that culture. But it's different, definitely. But I, I think that in the best of all possible worlds, you start to create these things from day one in the classroom. You know, whatever it takes. And, you know, establish some expectations. Engage them in how they want the classroom to be. And I mean, I know some classrooms are really in such a negative place that it's hard to get, elicit something but, you know, you get to know the kids, you, you encourage them to tell their stories, you respect them, and over time you may win that opportunity also. And that's maybe more what has to happen in the secondary level. It takes some time for you to build that relationship with them. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. It's, you know, every situation is a little different in the context. But, you know, there's some creative things happening in the classroom. Um, there are lots of things. I mean, why not have the class, you know, I mean, maybe they could, they could designate their own, I don't know how they would do it, but let's vote and choose two people in the classroom and get trained in the process, have any dialogue with each other, and come back and meet us in some groups. So it's not you. And maybe you do it in a sort of preemptive fashion so that you use the subject matter as the material, but you get them into facilitated conversations where they maybe are having differences of opinion. You know, maybe it's a, a controversial subject. And so you know, maybe you have some of these kids then facilitate for their peers practice.
just talking about difficult issues. I don't know. I mean, you know, there's a lot you can do in terms of process.